so welcome everyone so this is a react basic series where you are going to go through uh, the starting of react okay so we are going to start implementing react and we are going to learn uh, uh, redux okay and we will learn some of the react hooks as well so here is just the introduction on what is react so if you have already worked and familiar with the react concept this tutorial will be an easy one for you so first uh, so javascript framework for writing the web applications so like angular js we use a snappy response from running in your browser less opinionated one d specifies rendering view and handling user interactions user model view controller pattern so it is uh, widely called as it follows mvc architecture so so m stands for the model and v for view and c for controller so model is nothing but if you are using any uh, database in your uh, application then you have to give a schema for your database and view is nothing but the ui okay what is ui user interface okay which allows the users to interact with the application and controller is nothing but how it controls the flow of the application so basically we say it as routes okay so we have react router okay and optional but commonly used the html tem templating so minimal server side supported di dictated focuses on supporting for programming in the large and single page application modules reusable components and testing etc so what is the single page applications okay so single page application what it is so single page application means the page will not refresh on request okay okay the entire page okay need not refresh on request so if i am having a window like this and so let me consider this as a instagram and i am going to post a picture okay i am going to post a picture share it in this insta social media so there will be some buttons like like okay share and comment right so for comment uh like this will be the symbol and for sharing you will have like this right something like this okay an arrow mark okay i'm not good at this so it's just like a arrow mark okay so like share and comment so uh let me say at once i posted this okay uh it has not been liked okay so the count of this like is say for example three only three people have liked my post now uh i'm going to to like this page okay so this three has to change to four okay it has to get incremented okay it has to get incremented so three has to be increased to four so i'm going to uh, like my post and when i click this like button does this whole page refreshes again no so the whole page doesn't refresh only the part of your page okay only a part of the page gets refreshed so this is a single page application system and also react use virtual dom okay so dom stands for document object model so it uses like a tree based structure okay so you have a parent uh, component or a parent and you will have its corresponding children okay and this child components can have as many as child components also okay this may have two child this may have only one child 
okay so this is the tree tree data structure okay this document object model it uses a it uses a tree data structure and so what is this virtual dom means so one once i click this like button and it changes from three to four the like counts get incremented so this changes first it occurs in this so-called virtual dom and then once it changes occurs in the virtual dom it gets reflect back in the original dom okay so that the page in the page itself if you see the changes whatever changes you wanted to change it will be changed so initially first the changes will be occurring only in the virtual dom so that uh, it will be fast to implement so one of the biggest advantage okay of re using react is it it responds fast okay it is fast in use and other thing is reusable components so what is component what is state what is props we will discuss in the next sessions so it has reusable components and broader community support like react has broader community support in uh, github okay so if you have any queries regarding your application or your workflow you can have a discussion with your uh, with people around the community in github so it has a broader community range and so this is a, a book which we refer to and here uh, let me read it fast so it is an open source okay so what is open source anyone okay anywhere at any time can use react so it is free and open source so it is a component based front end library what is component let me say in the next session it is a front end library so means it is used in the front end part okay so javascript as a whole you have frameworks like react the other popular frame, uh, frameworks is uh, angular uh, view and etc right so but now currently the popular is react so using this front end we used to build our application and at the back end we may use uh, node.js so as a whole we may call it as a full stack application called uh, mon stack or uh, if we use angular then we say it as a uh, mean stack okay so m stands for the mongodb express react and node.js and mean is nothing but mongodb express angular and node so these are the parts of uh, how a full stack works so it is only for the view layer of the application and it is maintained by facebook so it uses virtual dom as i discussed so it's based on the mechanism to fill in data in html dom the virtual dom works fast owing to the fact that it only changes individual dom elements instead of reloading the complete dom every time so so it allows us to write components okay using domain specific language called jxs so javascript and html okay so allows us to write our components using html html while is mixing in javascript elements react will internally convert into a virtual dom and will ultimately output our html files so react reacts to state changes in your components quickly and automatically to re-render the components in the html dom by utilizing the virtual dom so the virtual dom is an in-memory representation of an actual dom by doing most of the processing inside of this virtual dom rather than directly in the browser dom so react can act quickly on only add update remove components which have changed since the last render cycle occurred so what is the life cycle of the react component and what is state what is prop we will see in the next session so before that so let me give a scenario where okay your manager is given a task okay and uh, the task has many use cases and you have completed the task okay within a couple of days okay and you have used you have built the application you have built the application you have used all the uh, given uh, use cases using react okay and your manager asks 
about your status and you give uh, you are going to give your uh, work okay as you complete in two days you are going to give a, uh, give your work to them and he suddenly calls you and asks for some changes so at that time what will you do will you be changing the entire application so say this is the application okay so this is the application which you have created using uh, react okay and he wants to change only a part okay only a part of this application and how will you change this without affecting the other part so this is where the picture comes in with the concept called components so you you use some some types of selectors over here the selectors include get element by id okay if you have worked on uh, uh, react or if you have worked on any other uh, such frameworks you might have known uh, get element by id it get element by class so these are some of the selectors which makes our work simplified okay so that we don't want to change our entire application we can only change a part where we need the change okay so if this is the part i want to need uh, the changes to be done i can use this component i can use the selectors and the things which are, uh, can be modified easily so so this is about the introduction thank so in fundamentals of recording okay as we are going through this okay so the first thing which we have to understand the basic application okay so only to demonstrate the basic concepts so the we have some basic uh, rules if i want to say okay some basic uh, rules which we have to follow so the rules uh, we'll see it one by one the first rule will be so always keep the developer console open okay uh, so when you if i open the browser okay you can see uh, this page and you can go to the developer options mode okay you can press f12 on okay or you can press option command i okay simultaneously so that you can uh, get into the console mode okay and if you want to open it in a uh, uh, windows then you can press control shift i okay so here are some the rules so when you open the console the console tab looks something like this okay so this entire region is the console region and you have some of the properties like elements okay uh, these are some of the tabs which which will be shown inside the console so elements network console performance sources application memory security audit add block plus so like this these are some properties it shows and each property has something and here we see the console tab okay here we see the console tab and uh, you will see what does each of the thing uh, symbolizes here okay so we also need to make sure that this network tab is also open and check the disable option okay disable cache option is shown and preserve log okay can also be useful it saves the logs printed by the application when the page is reloaded now we have some of the http methods right we have some of the http methods so hypertext math hypertext transfer protocol methods like uh, get method post method okay delete method like that we have some of the uh, http methods we use in our net uh, internet okay so some of them here i have given so the server and the web browser communicate with each other using the http protocol okay the network tab shows how the browser and the server communicate so in network tab you can see here okay i have this uh, one website and it shows the status as 200 okay so when you reload the page or you can simply press f5 button okay f5 key or this this option okay for refreshing okay the symbol on your browser to refresh 
so and the console will show that the two events have happened okay number one the browser has fetched the contents of the page okay okay from the page that is from the server and has downloaded the png file okay that is i'm i'm uh, fetching the contents of the page and i'm going to get some information from the okay i'm going to communicate the server with the web browser using http protocol so what i'm going to get here is simple uh, image okay a dot png file which i will have to download it okay and uh, you may also see this window call uh, okay inside network you will have some some of the headers so here we saw right the status 200 type document okay and here type uh, png like that we will get the headers also so the general header are uh, are like request url okay what is the url which i'm going to request so that is uh, that may be the uh, url of the application okay and what method i'm going to use either get get method or either it is a post method like that what method i'm going to request so that is the request method and status code 200 means that is the status is active okay and the other information such as remote address and refer okay and response address and request address like that you have some of the other information as well okay so once these requests are made okay inside this headers okay the response headers on top tell us the size of the response in bytes okay that is the exact time of the response and important header content type tells us the response is a text file in utf8 format so here you can see the response so previously we saw what what was inside the headers tab okay here in network uh, itself we have the response where you have the entire html uh, page itself okay that is uh, the this way the browser knows the response to be a regular html page and to render it to the browser like a web page so here you will you are having the contents of the web page whatever you are having so the page contains the div element okay uh, contains the link to the page of page node and the img tag okay so all these things you have okay so this is a simple uh, uh, chain of events okay which is going to happen so here i have given the chain of uh, events which is taking part okay so this is uh, no very important to be understand so the request was made to the address okay that is which was uh which which is a get method to get the png okay to download the dot png file okay and its type is a http get as i said okay what is the type uh, http get method the response headers tells us that the response size okay the response size may be some of uh maybe in the form of bytes so here i have given some number like this many bytes of memory and the content type is also a image okay the chain of event caused by opening the page on a browser form the following sequence diagram so what are the events which is happening in the sequence diagram so there is some communication or some interaction basically there is a interaction communication between the browser and the server first the browser will send a request to the http get method okay within this particular url and what will happen it is going to render the html code the html code is nothing but the html page itself which is going to have the uh, some of the tags like div tag img tag okay, image tag such as and then it is going to browser is again going to request the uh, uh P, the png file which i am going to download from the server and then the server responds with that particular image from this particular url so the browser will finally will display the page with the image embedded yes so here we have uh, the ajax okay so the so in early 90s style of web development they use this ajax only okay and uh, in early 2000s web technology also it played a major role so what is the uh, expansion of this so it is asynchronous javascript xml okay termed 
okay in in 2005 feb 2005 on the back on the advancement in browser technology to describe a new revolutionary approach that em enabled the fetching of content to web pages using javascript included within the html without the need to read into the page okay so all the pa web pages work like the traditional web application so as we saw earlier in this chapter all of the data shown on the page was fetched with some html code generated by the server okay so so what is this ajax is this simply which you makes use of they don't generally acknowledge conventions like the rest api okay and now nowadays we are not using this ajax much and uh, we move on to what is single page application so single page application okay the short form will be spa so the home page works like a traditional web page all of the logic is on the server and the browser only read and renders the html as instructed okay the notes page gives more of the responsibility generating the html code for existing nodes to the browser the browser tackles this task by executing the javascript code it fetched it from the server the code fetches the nodes from the server as a json data and adds html elements for displaying the nodes to the page using dom api okay so in recent years the spa style of creating web pages has emerged okay what does it what does it okay so it doesn't uh, don't fetch all of their pages separately from the server like our sample application does but instead comprise only one html page fetched from the server the contents of which are manipulated with the javascript that executes in the browser the nodes okay bear some of the resemblance of spa style page but it's not quite there yet so even though the logic for rendering the nodes is run on the browser the page still uses the traditional way of adding new nodes so here is some example i have given for a single page app okay so here i have given browser is easy hmm? yes so everything i have listed here yes and inside a form i have given an input type of name and an input to an uh, field of submit button also okay so the post request to address the new notes sp contains the new note as json data containing both the content of the note and the timestamp so the json format will look like this okay which is going to have a content key value pair okay content and a date so content is something like some a string type okay and date is the format of a date okay current timestamp okay that is the method we use also so you can see the content type in header you can see request headers you can see the content type also which is a json okay so here uh, we see some of the javascript libraries so the sample app is done is also a vanilla javascript using only the dom api and javascript to manipulate the structure of the pages so some of the common uh, uh, libraries we use okay javascript js libraries we use is uh, angular okay react and vue js okay and most popularly these two are used but react also it is used widely okay in react we have uh, some of the things like react native okay for developing the mobile applications and uh, some of the concept which includes uh, hooks and redex okay so we as we saw uh, what is a functional component what is a class based component okay all these comes under the react okay so here is the explanation for it so jquery was also one of the most uh, uh, libraries ever so popular jquery so developed back when web publication mainly focused on the traditional style of server generating html pages so the functionality of which was enhanced on the browser side using javascript written within with jquery so one of the reasons for the success of jquery was its so called cross browser compatibility so the library worked regardless of the browser or the company that made it so there was no need for browser specific solutions so nowadays using jquery is not as justified justified given the advancement of javascript 
and most popular browsers generally support basic functionalities well. So the rise of the single page app brought several more modern ways of web development than jQuery. So the favorite of the first wave of developers was Backbone.js. After its launch in 2012, Google's AngularJS quickly became almost the due factor standard of modern web development. Okay. Now this is the path of a full stack web developer. Okay. So full stack is a buzzword that everyone talks about while no one really knows what it means or at least there is no agreed upon definition of for the term. So practically all web applications have at least two layers. The browser being closer to the end user is the top layer and the server the bottom one. So there is often also a database layer below the server. We can therefore think of an architecture of a web application as a kind of stack of layers. Okay, like a stack data structure. Often we talk about the front end and the back end. The browser is the front end and JavaScript that runs on the browser is a front end code. The server on the other hand is a back end. In the context of this course, okay, full stack web development means that we fo focus on all of the parts of the application that is the front end, back end and the database. Sometimes the software on the server and its OS are seen as part of the stack, but we don't go into those, okay. And we will code the backend with JavaScript using the Node.js runtime environment. Using the same programming language on multiple layers of the stack gives full stack web development as a whole new dimension. Okay. Welcome back. So let me test everything works fine. Yeah. So I'm going to skip the installation or the setup part up to you. So you should have already installed the React and Node in your system. So if you want, you can refer from internet or other YouTube videos. And over here, so just give I will give you a glance of what how to do it. So you can open your terminal. Okay. Or your command prompt and you can give a node okay hyphen v so your node is installed and npm is node package manager hyphen v okay and that is also has been installed successfully so you can open your vs code so these are the other Works. So new terminal. So in my D drive, I want to create a React app now. So what will I give? So I should be giving. Once you are install React and all, so npx create React app. Okay, give the uh, iPhone K okay, in between, and you can give the file name. So usually they give my app so you can give any file name here so i'm going to create a react practice app for i will give pract or prac okay or prac react okay um, let me give my file name as this and give enter okay so this is going to take a time So sorry, it's my bad. So create React app. I have given React React app. Sorry. So create okay, React app. So this will take some time to initialize the React package. So it is going to create a new React app. Okay, it is going to React install the packages like React React DOM and React scripts. So we'll wait for some time. So until then, moving back here. So you have this basic HTML here. If you if you could see, you have the basic uh, HTML over here, right? So with header tag, body tag. So inside body tag, you have the what tag? Your script tag. So I have said the type is going to be JavaScript and source a uh, given like path okay react.js and another one is react.dom.js 
so this is going to be the basic inclusion okay so this uh, so this is actually a HTML okay and you have enclosed some scripts inside the HTML okay so uh, this is the HTML page only now so if I say you can also install react using npm so npm install dash dash save react react dom and to use it in your project you have to import these two lines what where okay where is the data type okay in react that is in javascript that is a data type okay so react require of react react dom equal to require of react dom and you have to render that within the what whatever component you have named okay you are going to react dom dot render of this is nothing but the component which you want to render so here i'm going to render what app component so let me discuss it now following the so basically we have two types of uh, uh ways of uh, method uh, producing this components okay so one is the stateful component okay stateful component and stateless component which is more efficient is stateless component this stateful component is otherwise called as class component and stateless components are called as the functional component okay so this is class and this is the function so we use this functional component only it is more efficient and here they are given like example so here it is the stateless so uh, how you going to give us const okay there is a data type stateless sum equal to a comma b arrow mark arrow function okay arrow function that is gives a plus b okay the same thing i can implement using the stateful function like let a equal to 0 const stateful sum equal to okay some empty function equal to a plus plus see this line of code is very simple okay stateless is very simple compared to this stateful component so that that is why we recommend the stateless function here so this if you want you can learn more detail also okay so once so i did this only okay i created my react app and i can see now it must have been installed see happy hacking now the project whatever i gave no create react app it has been installed so i want to move into that particular folder so i will give change directory cd what was the name i gave of my folder react project so that is prac react okay prac react so again i'm doing some spelling mistakes okay now i'm going to give npm start okay it has to open in the browser okay it will automatically open you in the browser so let it wait for some time so starting the development server so in my browser okay so if it is successfully installed you will get the react logo over here yes so you are installed react successfully and your project has been set up okay and uh, over here you could see this so this is the file i created right so in this prac react see whatever things i have from year to year okay so i have a public folder inside source i have app.cs so let me open it over in that file so this is here okay open with code Okay, let me wait until it opens. So now we are given this two steps also. Okay, we are completed with this two steps also. 
now um, okay this we'll see later okay so so we will do this hello world okay so here without JSS okay that is the basic example that uses react's main api to create a react element and the react tom api to render the react element in the browser so here i have the html inside that i'm having the script tag okay and i'm saying like create element okay h1 and that is going to be returning hello world and i'm going to set a dom container and that is going to be called using get element by id that is id name is example and i'm going to render that so render these two things so the so that it will print this one hello world okay so this is without jsx now with the jsx how we can perform that okay and so you can also uh, like you can also create okay components okay you can create components so import react command component from react import render from react dom so this is the class name so in java we may have used oops so this is also similar to that so class first component expense component render insert render method i'm having a return type with the div tag okay and i can call using this get element by id of content so this is a functional component is this a class or functional component it is a stateless so it is a functional component and it does not contain a state okay so in such a case some people find it preferable to use status function component which is based on ESS arrow functions so here they are given the two ca main characteristics when rendered they receive an object with all the props that were passed on they must return the JSS to be rendered now we have to know about the higher order components first so what are higher order components okay it allows us to share the component functionality so let us consider this following example import react component from react okay so i'm having a variable print hello that is equal to compose component okay i've used arrow function and here i am given a class i have given a component so, okay so class extends component and here i have given the method what is that on click okay inside on click i have given console log hello and then render inside render i'm going to return the this tag this composed component so this composed component is nothing but a component okay so in previously we saw i gave i rendered this app component because everything was under this app content okay okay like i said uh, class extends uh, app but here i am using what component composed component okay i have initialized the name of this component to compose component so i am going to return i am going to render and return this compose component only here and what i am going to use a property here so this that props means okay this but this uh, refers to only this to the particular uh, component we are using so this dot props on click equal to this dot on click so it will go and check uh, in this uh, component where the on click method has been there so the on click method is over here so what is going to ask okay what it is asking to perform it is going to uh, logging it is going to console log hello so in your console if you see hello will be printed okay so cons first name equal to first component equal to props so inside div tag i have given the on click so props dot on click hello comma prom same i am a first component okay so this is about the components in react so in this session we will learn about okay the jsx element okay
okay so what is dsx and what it does with the react component so jsx means javascript and html okay so you need to remember few things over here that is the jsx maps to call react.create element so what basically this create element is you create some html tags over there it may be heading heading tag like this h1 okay heading tag is h1 h2 like that heading tag up to h6 okay this is the heading tag and you can like create element with the paragraph tag p tag also so these are the this is how it calls okay so writing javascript html like syntax that is converted to javascript function calls okay this is the thing you have to remember over uh, jsx okay so if they ask jsx this is what you have to say so what does this create element will do so this is the syntax uh, this line is the syntax okay so react.create element of you have to specify the types comma props comma the children okay so the type may be the tag which you are going to create okay or the react.component and then props is nothing but the object okay or the properties okay object or properties so the type okay text use camel case okay and the children you, you can have zero or more children which can be either string or numbers okay or react element or an array and now okay so this is what you have to do and how does this jss templates must return a valid child parameter okay so this is the uh, next question we have to ask so the templates can have javascript scope variables and expressions what is variable okay if i'm having a okay a equal to within quotes i'm giving udemy okay that means this a what is the type of string next line in my console if i'm going to uh, ask okay you can check it in your browser okay if you want so next line in my con console if i after uh, specifying a equal to udemy okay after giving a equal to udemy okay i have assigned a with udemy and then i'm going to ask type of a what it will return so it is going to return the type of a which is actually a string s if i'm saying a equal to 5 then now type of a will be an integer so this is how a variable is okay a is a variable and expression i'm saying right a equal to 5 is a expression now so here valid if foo is in scope if foo would have been a valid function call the param okay so like this one okay compute and string in scope template must evaluate to a value okay and it doesn't work if an expression okay if it isn't an expression then it is not going to work okay and some problem for loop uh, okay with the for loops and other javascript statements that don't return values so these are the thing you have to remember with jss now conditional render in jss so you can use what is this operator called sorry this is colon okay what is this operator called as question mark colon that is the ternary operator or the conditional operator so you can use this conditional operator also uh, in jss also like you use in python and c so here in inside the div tag okay i have given this dot state dot so the state and all we will come later okay in this uh, later in the session we'll see what is state and what is the what it does okay and everything so this dot state dot use spanish then question mark okay within what is this b tag bold tag okay within the bold tag i given a text hola colon hello so if this is true okay if this this is the condition if this is true this condition is true then this block will get executed okay this whole will be executed if it is only if the condition only is true and if it is false it is going to return hello okay now iterations so you have an i list item which is going to be initially empty and i'm going to iterate over this list so i have given okay i is less than data dot length then i plus plus then list items dot push and then i have given this so here is the iterations 
okay so it is going to iterate over the key okay as specified like in the list i given like key equal to c key equal to data of i so this i have to enclose within curly braces flower bracket okay so this is how yeah, i i can do iteration in jxs and i similarly i can use styling also okay now this is the important uh, session so that is component life cycle and methods so what is a life cycle so from one stage it goes to next cycle okay next stage and it is going to go for the next stage in a circular motion and it is from here three third state it is going to fourth state and it is going to go for the first stage so this is the cycle okay and this we say you know uh, this uh, this technology this term we call it as what a life cycle so similarly component it has a life cycle in react so what it is so basically you have mounting okay and updating app then later stages the unmounting okay so mounting what it is is it has a construct okay and it is going to render from the react element okay so you remember we give this render of method okay we give this render of method so this render and then what does this updates the dom and serfs okay so as i said in virtual dom only the original thing changes take place then later it gets reflected in the original document object so that's what it does and then it will it will invoke this component did mount method so these are the methods here component did mount component did update component will unmount okay so so you can go through these links or this diagram okay for further understanding so this is another example of lifecycle method where a class example extends from the add component then see i have used this method component did mount where it is you have is are over here okay so what it is going to do it is going to do mounting so you can see const increment function equal to okay inside arrow function i have given this dot set state counter colon this dot state dot counter plus one so it is nothing but this ink function is nothing but it is going to increment okay increment a value by one okay so it is going to do some increment operation so this dot timer id equal to set interval time area of ink function comma two into thousand then will unmount so that i am going to clear this interval of this dot time already like this is going to act as a okay shutdown timer so welcome back so in this session we will learn about the props and later we move on to the state so as i said earlier props is nothing but properties or in simple terms we call it as objects so we will just have introduction so props are way to pass information into a react component they have any type including functions sometimes referred to as callbacks okay so generally okay you have one parent component okay let me say this is a parent component and you have uh, one child component okay you have one child component and this is going to be having another one child okay it is going to be having another one child so say child so it now this parent has to communicate with this one okay it has to communicate with this one how does it communicate so it cannot directly communicate like this rather it use something known as props to pass some value from the parent component to child component and from parent component to the child component so this is how the basic props so if you want to see the attribute syntax 
okay my prop component okay user id equal to 123 so inside the definition for my component user id will now be accessible from the props object so the render function inside my component will look like the, like this so render within render i'm going to return the span tag okay the user's id is this dot props dot user id so this refers to the super okay which is in the current class so what is the user uh, uh, given user id i given this one so it is going to return what one two three so output is one two three okay then so type script and all we are not going to see so that is a uh, no type uh, we are not going to do type script and all okay if you are already well known in type script then you could refer the previous okay moving on to states so what basic state is so state in react is essential to manage and communicate data in your application so it is represented as a javascript object and has component level scope so we are going to deal only with what components we are going to deal components so what is the scope okay what is the scope component level scope and it can be thought of as the private data of your component so uh, you can see this uh, example here okay and see okay this is the like i have used the class example component which is going to extend from the react component constructor of props super of crops okay this thing is very essential now okay constructor of props super of props then i'm going to set my initial state so this is that state okay inside this i can use any object okay i now here i have given only one so as i have said uh, greeting higher body and then i am going to render this greeting property how return within the div tag i am going to give this dot state dot greeting so what it is going to return okay it is going to return only higher body okay so if you want to use some common anti pattern okay then you can use uh, like this okay save you find okay you have no export default class from my component okay like that i have extended constructor of super of this dot state okay url i have kept empty url i have given empty then this dot on change equal to this dot on change dot bind of this so this the uh, so this on change is basically like a event okay so here i given like on change of e okay event this dot set state of then here i have passed okay you could see right so here i have passed like this dot props dot url plus within quotes a days plus e dot target dot string value then i have called this method what method component will mount method so component will mount off this dot set state of url okay colon this dot props dot this dot props dot url and then i'm going to use return render function and then i'm going to return the same on change event okay that may look a pretty uh, you know like complex but if you get through the code once okay this will be a very simple one okay you could check your code you can pass the video and you can check the code as of now yeah so then moving on with the state methods so we call we have a method called set state of so what is going to use so that primary way that makes uh you updates to your react application is through a call to the set state function okay so we mostly use this function okay okay to perform shallow merge between the new state that you provide and the previous state and you will have a trigger to re-render of your component and all decisions so what are the params okay the parameters it is going to have it is going to have an updater and a callback what does this updater will do okay it is going to have a number of key value pair okay that should be merged into the state or a function that returns such an object and this callback okay callback is again is another function okay and this this is optional okay if i want to have a callback 
I can have or else I can get uh, rid of this okay which will be executed after the state state has been executed successfully due to the fact that calls to state state are not guaranteed by react to be atomic this can sometimes be useful if you want to perform some action after you are positive that state state has been executed successfully so this is how you use the state state function with the two parameters one is the updater and with the callback argument okay here is an example okay using updater i'm going to use okay i'm not going to have a second argument that is a callback okay because callback is only optional so i'm going to get rid of this but i'm going to have an updater okay then only i can use the set state so you can see class greeting extends react and component then constructor props super dot props okay this dot click equal to this dot click dot bind of this so i'm going to set the initial state only allowed in the constructor which is the constructor here this is the constructor of which class of greeting class so greeting is the class name and what is the constructor here here is the constructor then this dot state greeting equal to hello click of e okay on click function okay this dot state state of greeting hello world only when this event is triggered okay then only i have to set state to hello world but initially the state is what greeting hello only okay one when the only when the trigger okay when the event is click event is triggered then only this greeting has to ch uh, set change to hello world so initially it is there hello only when i click on the button it has to change to hello world this one and then i can render see div tag la okay instead div tag i have given the paragraph tag this dot state dot greeting this okay on click button i am having this dot click so this will uh, this this will be triggered only when i am going to click this button okay so like click me okay the button name is click me so whenever i am going to click whenever the uh, mouse cursor is going to come and click this then uh, this hello will be changed into hello world set state okay now with the function as updated so here you can see a function i have passed okay the state okay this is not set state of function of previous state comma current props so return counter colon previous state dot counter plus one okay and this can be safer than using an object argument where multiple calls to set state are used as multiple calls may be batched together by react and executed at once and is preferred approach when using the props to set the state okay so this is how you are going to do this clear so components state event handlers so we will go back to the working of react okay so here is an example okay here i am having a, a prop okay i am passing a prop into it okay uh, okay const hello props what i'm going to have i'm going to return inside the div tag okay paragraph tag i'm saying hello props dot name okay within calibrations and your props dot age years old so that now i'm going to get the values of the name and the age yes i want to get the values of name and age so here i uh, i have to assign okay name so first initially i have assigned peter and the age as 10 okay inside the app okay app as the function name okay inside that i'm going to say name i'm going to set name as peter and age as 10 okay uh, this is going to be a string and this is going to be an integer okay return inside div okay so first uh, adding tag i'm going to say greetings and then see the tag itself hello so this is the component i'm going to use okay so name maya age okay i'm going to do some arithmetic operations so 26 plus 10 okay that is 36 so hello name equal to within curly braces name and age also within curly braces age so what will be the output yes so it is going to display what the name as maya okay 
and it is going to say okay hello maya okay you are 36 okay you are 36 year old so that will be the output so first it will print okay in your browser it is going to uh, say greetings okay and below it is going to uh, so in paragraph tag okay as, as a paragraph it is going to display hello maya okay you are uh, 36 years old now so that is basically i brushed up with the uh, uh, basics okay now we have some of the component helper functions okay now i use the uh, this hello as a component right now this hello campaign i can expand it that in, so that it guesses the year of birth of the person being greeted so here i have highlighted the text right so con you can practice all of this code in VS, in your preferred text editor maybe vs code or uh, sublime okay whatever text editor you are comfortable with uh, whatever ide you are comfortable with you can practice in that so here i'm going to expand this hello component itself so here see uh, inside the hello okay props born year that i'm going to pass it as a function so year now equal to new date of dot get full year of so what is this basically is i'm calculating this year now okay year now is going to be i have to do some i have to perform some calculation with this okay i'm going to perform some calculation with this how i'm going to perform that calculation so uh, I'm going to create an object here. Okay, so the uh, date of Okay, that is the uh, Method I'm going to use. Okay dot get full year of okay here. I have passed it So return year now minus props dot age. So this props dot age will say what is the age that has been given by the user and here inside the return okay inside div and paragraph hello props dot name comma URA your props that age years old so you you are probably born in so born in year born year will say so from the date now okay this date of method is the current date okay and it is going to do what it is going to year now okay the current date mine um, minus the age what uh, what was given by the user okay so now i'm going to say like uh, my age is uh, 22 okay uh, and the current year okay get full year the current year is 2022 okay and my age will be my same age is 22 now this year now what will do it will take this current year and it will take the user entered year age so 22 and it is going to calculate and uh, give me the bond year so you can you guess what will be the bond year so bond year will be 2000 Yes, date of birth will be 2000 and the age is 22 now so that is how this actually works okay so here is the logic is just guessing the year of birth separated into a function of its own that is called when the component is rendered okay and we have the concept like destructuring so before we move forward we will take a look at a small but useful feature of javascript language that is ESS that we added into the E ESX uh, specification that allows us to destructure values from objects and arrays upon assignment. So what is this uh, destructuring works is okay. So in previous code also we had the reference okay reference to the data passed to our component has props dot name props dot age okay in every component we are going to use this props okay say props dot name props dot age then we will encounter a problem such as uh, prop drilling okay so uh, the, uh, these can be the since props is also an object okay we can destructure it so here I have given right props is equal to within curly braces I have given uh, key value pass okay name as hard to loss and age as 35 so this is how I can destructure the props so we can streamline our component by assigning the values of the properties directly into to the uh, two variables name and age which we can use in our code okay so i have taken that props okay the property is also an object right so that props itself i'm going to create an object here and then i am going to assign two variables that i'm going to put it into two variables such as name and age and i'm going to give the value for it 
okay now i can say cons name equal to props dot name props dot age okay age also i'm giving then cons okay here i am given function for the born year which is going to be new date of dot get full year minus age and then here you can see how i use here i am not using again props dot name okay this props dot name is where i have assigned to the name to the variable name and props dot age also i have assigned to age so i can uh, directly call age here okay do you get it yes so now okay we have also utilized the more compact syntax for the arrow functions when defining the bond year function okay see now this is very compact right here uh, previously what i did okay inside the arrow function i had another one here now and then i was using like this now this arrow function is also is very compact so that is how we can do this destructuring so if an arrow function consists of a single expression then the function body does not need to be written inside of curly braces so directly i can write it so there is no curly braces inside this arrow function right okay there is no need to be written inside the curly braces in this more compact form the function is simply returns the result of the single expression okay and so we can assign uh, the values and of the properties directly to the variables by destructuring the props object that is passed to the component function as a parameter so here see const hello that was a component i was using then inside that the props here i used props okay instead of name comma age okay here i can i can simply use props also but i know what is this name i have assigned okay const uh, name equal to props dot props dot name and similarly const age equal to props dot age like i have assigned props of name and props of name to name and age respectively so i can use this component also like this okay and what is page rendering re-rendering okay so page re-rendering so far all of our application have been such that their appearance remains the same after initial rendering what if we wanted to create a counter where the value increases as a function of time or at the click of a bottom button so let's start with the following app.js file okay so which is going to have okay const app props okay then i'm going to have a counter equal to props then return okay i'm going to say the uh, counter then export the default app so inside index.js i have to write I import the app okay and then i have to import the react dom also so let counter equal to one i'm going to assign the counter value initially to one and react dom dot render of this is the app component i'm having okay app counter equal to counter then document dot get element by id of root so note when you change the index.js okay react does not always refresh the page automatically so you possibly need to reload your browser so to get the new content shown so the app component is given the value of a counter via the counter prop this component renders the value to the screen what happens when the value of counter changes even if we where to the add the following like counter plus equal to one if i'm going to say then what it is going to uh, do okay the component won't re-render we can get the component to re-render by calling the react dom dot render method a second time that is i can say let counter one then refresh equal to okay here i'm again defining the function const refresh is a function i'm going to say and react dom dot render of this app component inside that i'm going to say counter equal to counter then refresh of counter plus equal to one refresh of like that i'm again and again i'm going to uh, make use of this refresh function so that it is going to re-render so the re-rendering command has been wrapped inside of the refresh function to cut down on the amount of copy pasted code now the component renders three times first the value one then two finally three however the values one and two are displayed on the screen for such a short amount of time that they can't be noticed so we can implement slightly more interesting functionality by re-rendering and incrementing the counter every second by using a set interval method so set interval then inside that refresh of counter plus equal to this, this is the thousand that is one second okay in a click of one second that is going to change making repeated calls to the react down to a render method is not the recommended way to re-render components next we will introduce a better way of accomplishing this effect so instead of again and again calling this react dot render uh, react down dot render we will use a better thing so that we have the stateful component 
so we saw what is a stateful component and stateless component and all so i will move on to event handling so in react event handling also we can do okay we already mentioned event handlers that are registered to a call when specific events occur a few minutes in a part okay so user interaction with the different elements of a web page can cause a collection of various different kinds of events to be get triggered so the mouse events click event okay or a drag event okay a touch event okay in the keyboard you are going to uh, click a button uh, press a key so that is also going to be a event okay you are going to type a name okay in, in the field of enter the name value you are going to press the keys to enter the name so that is also going to be a event so here i'm having okay inside app i'm saying a counter and set counter so this is something called use state okay use state okay that is going to be a hooks okay which that was that all going to be a, as i said earlier all those uh, use state effect uh, use effect use state uh, use ref use context all these are going to be the hooks okay and hooks are generally nothing but the functional components in react so we have here the counter and set counter and equal to use state of zero initial okay and here i'm giving a event handle click off okay that is equal to arrow function console.log of click okay whenever this event is triggered okay if you open the console and see you will be getting this click the message over there and instead the return okay i'm having the div counter then button on click that there i'm going to call from here on click if i click only you know this hand click and click should be uh, promoted so that will be a plus sign okay button will be plus sign so we set the value of the buttons on click attribute to a reference to be a reference to the handle click function defined in the code okay so this also i can make uh, make like this okay here itself i can say button on click uh, uh, equal to okay the narrow function console dot log of click that by changing the event handle to the ha form following form like button on click okay um, instead of this console log message i can say in this button on click a okay arrow function set counter of counter plus one here i am using the use data so counter and set counter i use okay so set counter of counter plus one that button itself so we achieve the desired behavior meaning the value of a counter is increased by one and the component also gets re-rendered okay now i want to add a button for resetting the counter so uh, one is a plus button and another one is a reset button okay uh, this button will uh, what it is going to do it is going to every time when it this is clicked okay that is the handle click method is going to be invoked and what it is going to go it is going to increment by one this reset will be resetting the values so here counter set counter then here you can see um add a function set counter of counter this one then again one button okay that i am going to reset so that is instead of a reset i am going to change it to zero so set counter of zero so whenever this reset button is clicked okay whenever this reset button is clicked okay um say, say for example the button is three i'm going to uh, click this button now it is going to change into four when i'm going to click this reset button this will be reset to zero so this is how the re-rendering uh, occurs okay so event handler is a function so we define the event handlers for our buttons where we declare their on click attributes yes so how to pass state to child components so it is recommended to, to write react components that are small and reusable across the application and even across projects so let's refactor our application so that it's composed of three smaller components one component for displaying the counter and two components for the buttons so for, let's first implement a display component that's responsible for displaying the value of the counter one best practice in react is to lift the state up in the component hierarchy so often so this is how uh, they say okay often several components need to reflect the same changing data we need we recommend lifting the shared state up to their closest common ancestor 
So let's place the application state in app component and pass it down to the display component through props. So this is the display component. Okay, props through props. I'm going to get the uh, pass the data from the parent component to the child component. Props dot counter. So using the component is a straightforward as we only need to pass the state of the counter to it. So what I will do here, I'm saying, okay, uh, counter set counter. I'm going to use this use state only. Then increase by one set counter of counter plus one set to zero. That is the reset. Okay, set counter of zero. Here I'm having okay display counter equal to counter button on click increase by one. Okay, this one I'm calling. Then button on click equal to set to zero. This one I'm calling here. So this is how everything works. Okay, when the button are clicked on the app gets re-render all of its children including the display component are also re-rendered so let's make a button for the buttons of our application we have to pass the event under as well as the title of the button through the components props so how we will do i will pass this as a props.txt okay so our app component now looks like this like uh, decrease by one also i'm going to have so here i'm having the text plus okay uh, text zero text minus like that if I'm going to have it is going to be very easy also Okay It is going to easily re-render also. So since we now have an easily reusable button component We have also implemented new functionality into our application by adding a button that can be used to decrement the counter So the event and the passed to the button component through the on click prop the name of the prop itself is not that's significant, but our naming choice wasn't completely random. React's own official tutorial suggests this convention only. Okay, so this is how the refactoring the component also acts. So handling uh, arrays in React. Okay, so you know what is an array and how it stores data in it. Okay, so I don't want to get deep inside into what is an array and what all you should do with it. So directly we jumped into the code. So here you have a, a application code that uh, okay. Let's add a piece of state to our application containing an array all clicks that remembers every click that has occurred in an application. Okay, so it basically is going to store okay all the clicks which I'm going to have it in an application. So let me jump into the code directly. Okay, so you see here I'm using left set left. Okay, use states only right set right all clicks set all. Now here I have the function. Okay, handle click handle left to handle the left click. Okay, so this is for handling handling left click, and this is for handling the. Uh, like right left okay so you set all of all clicks dot concat of l so l is a as a string and here concat of r as a string that is left to plus one then set right of right plus one i'm calling this also first i call this one set all okay first i'm calling this and i'm calling this one first i'm calling this and calling this one like that i'm the function is being called and in returns how i'm going to return left okay so button on click and left click this function itself and then again a button okay that is going to be right so on click and right click okay so it is a button then paragraph all clicks are join off okay all clicks are join off like i have concatenated it in. so how this is going to print the output Okay, every click is stored into a separate piece of state that is nothing but an array. Okay, that itself is an it's going to act as an array. And that array name I have given is this one. All clicks array. Okay, that array name which I have given is all clicks array. Here you can see okay, handle left to click. Set all of all clicks dot concat of L, then set left of left to plus one. So the piece of state stored in all clicks is now set to be an array that contains all of the items of the previous state array plus the letter L. Okay, so it is going to have all the previous state also. Whatever the previous state of the array it is going to hold. Okay, maybe the previous click that has been occurred and it is going to add the letter L to it. 
so adding the new item to be uh, to the array is accomplished with the concatenation method concat method okay uh, that does not mutate the existing array but rather returns a new copy of the array with the item added to it so as mentioned previously it is also possible in javascript to add items to an array with the push method okay okay in javascript we usually use this push method not concat method so if we add the item by pushing to the all click array and then updating the state the application would still appear to work okay see here i have used instead of concat of l i have used all clicks that push method so however don't do this why so as mentioned previously the state of the react components like all clicks must not be mutated directly okay it shouldn't be mutating directly even if mutating state appears to work in some cases it can lead to problems that are very hard to debug why you can ask me so that see if i'm clicking okay how the clicking is rendered into a page okay first the left click or the right click and then i'm going to join so we call the join method okay on the all the clicks array that joins all the items to a single string separated by a string passed as a function parameter which in our case is a empty space yes so so it is always better to use this okay and we saw a condi what is conditional rendering is so the previous uh, thing is that i can change it okay modifying application so that the rendering of the clicking history is handled by a new history component itself so see this is the component history component which is going to have some props so if props at all clicks dot length equal to zero return the app is used by pressing the button set okay so if this is false then it is going to return this one okay button press history props dot all clicks dot join off then inside app component i'm going to say return the same thing we had previously okay but here i'm using this component history itself okay history component all clicks equal to all clicks see now the behavior of the component depends on whether or not any buttons have been clicked if not meaning that the all the clicks array is empty the component renders a div element with some instruction instead okay the component renders a div element with some instructions in instead so the div tag okay the app is used by pressing the buttons and in all other cases the component renders the clicking history so button press history that is prompts dot all clicks are joined so the history component renders completely different react elements depending on the state of the application this is called as conditional rendering okay i'm setting a condition okay instead of the react elements okay depending on the state of the application i'm going to define a component that is here in this case i'm going to set using a history component so this is something called condition rendering okay so the other ways of doing it also like this okay see here what i have done these are the same okay inside history props i'm setting the props okay if this props that all clicks that length equal to zero then i'm going to say pressing the buttons then return button press history prompts and all clicks have joined but here you see i'm having a button inside that i'm going to pass two props one is a event handle click event and another was as a text which it refers to button on click into handle click text so button inside this app component same thing okay using the use case the uh, use states so left uh, set left right set left, set right all clicks set all and then the same things like concat method i'm going to use this and left left uh, set left of left plus one and set right of right plus one okay here i'm referring uh, uh, this uh, left and right button using what this event and click itself is going to trigger another event and left click that is the function and there i'm going to use a reference text equal to left text equal to right okay so this is how uh, it does now the rules of react okay so there are a few limitations and rules we have to follow to ensure that our application uses rules based state functions correctly so the use state function as well as the use of a function introduced later on in the course must not be called from inside of a loop a conditional expression or in place that is a not a function defining the component okay this is the rule number one actually okay it shouldn't be it should not be called from inside of a loop 
or from a conditional expression or any place that is not not a function defining a component. So this must be done to ensure the hoops are always called in the same order. And if it is in the same uh, case, the application will behave erratically. To recap, hooks may only be called from inside of a function body that defines a real component. And we also want to define or use the hooks only in the top level. See, only in the uh, first itself, I am defining this uh, hooks age set age, u state of zero, then name set name, u state of some name I am passing to it. So, like that, I am uh, I am defining this uh, hooks only in the top level. Okay, I cannot uh, use this hooks uh, in, in this place. I cannot use this uh, hooks in this at last this bottom plane. I have to use it in the first itself. Whenever a function has been uh, component has been uh, defined, first thing you have to define is hooks. Okay, if you are going to use it. Yes. So now a function that returns a function. Okay, this is another way to define an event handler is to use a function that returns a function itself. So you probably won't use uh, need to use functions that return functions in any of the exercises. If the topic seems particularly confusing, you may skip over. Okay. So what is this? So here I'm having okay inside am component, I'm having values at value state of 10. Then hello equal to const handler equal to okay arrow function console.log of hello world return handler then inside the return method i am using okay do tag value button on click hello yes the code functions correctly even though it looks complicated so the event handler is now set to a function call that is button on click equal to hello button so earlier on we stated that an event handler may not be a call to a function and that it has to be a function or reference to a function. Why then does a function call work in this case? So when the component is re uh, rendered, the following function get executed, which is this function. Inside the hello, inside that we am going to have a uh, arrow function that is handler. Okay, console.log of hello and. So this only is going to return hello world in the console. The return value of the function is another function that is assigned to the handler variable. Yes. Similarly, I can use a function to call another function. Okay, event handler also I can use. Okay, since hello function, okay, returns a function. The event handler is now also function. Okay. Like that we are having here. Now, do not define. Okay. Do not define components within components. Okay, so let's start displaying the value of the application into its own display component. We will change the application by defining a new component inside the app component. So this is the right place to define a component and do not define component inside another component. See here I have a component button. Okay, inside that I'm passing props. Okay, button on click equal to props dot handle click props dot text. Then here you see const app. Okay, this is another one component app component. Here I'm using the hooks value set value u state of 10. Okay, set to value. This is again in a function. Okay, const set to value new value arrow function. Okay, console.log value now comma new value set value of new value. See, this is a uh, component inside this component. I'm, I'm again defining a component which is we should not do. So inside app component, I'm this I'm defining the display component const define equal to props okay uh, do props at value so this is the wrong way but the application still works okay but don't implement components like this or never define the components instead of other components the method provides no benefits and leads to many unpleasant problems the biggest problems are due to the fact that react treats a component defined instead of another component as a new component in every render this makes it impossible for react to optimize the component so instead move the display component function to its correct place which is outside of the app component. So here is the app component and in outside of the app component I can use this display component. Okay. So getting data from server. Okay. So for a while now we have only been working at the front end that is the browser. 
so in server also we need to know what does basically it does this okay that is server side functionality okay so um, let's use a tool meant to be used during the software development okay call the JSON server to act as a server okay create a file name named okay file named db.json okay that is the format okay dot json file in the root directory of the project with the following content so so this is the json i'm having so nodes okay inside that okay as an array i'm going to store all these things okay id one content okay html is easy like this i'm having okay okay here also i have to use this comma then what So you can install JSON server globally on your machine using the command npm install g. Okay. So this is how you have to install the npm. Okay. Uh, not only React. Okay. You can install this also. Okay. You will be using access and promises. Okay. All this also you have to use. Okay. So this is what I was searching for that is hook effects okay so we already have seen hooks okay state hooks okay that we have introduced and uh, we, this is so called the functional component also so the effect hook lets us to perform side effects and the functional components such as data fetching okay setting up a subscription and manually changing the DOM in react components are all examples of side effects okay so as such okay effect hooks are precisely the right tool to use when fetching data from a server let's remove the fetching of data from index.js since we are going to be retrieving the nodes from the server there is no longer need to pass a data as a props to the app component so app.js can be simplified like this okay react dom dot render of app component okay then command document dot get element id by id of root so the app components changes as follows so first you have to import the use state and use effect okay from react then i have to import axios i have to import note from inside components i have this folder note now inside app component okay notes set notes use state of this i'm going to pass it as an array so i have used here array okay see here use state of i am passing this as an array and here i am giving as an empty string and here i am giving a boolean that is true i could even give false but here as of now i'm giving true okay now use effect of console.log of effect okay axios.get okay this particular url i given okay local host notes then dot then okay which is going to act as a promise also dot then response okay console.log of promise fulfilled okay so promise it is going to either goes to the accepted state or rejected state okay that is the that is the promise has been fulfilled okay this is accepted and this is the rejected state so set notes of response that data then here also i'm going to pass it one so only once it take place okay array only once it is going to do then console log of render command notes dot length notes okay such that I have passed. Now, what they are trying to show. So we have also added a few helpful prints. Okay, here is the printer to the console. Render zero nodes effect. Then I then okay the effect has been come. Okay, inside this use effect it has called effect has been printed. Then uh, inside this node and went and then the response has been console that is such as promise fulfilled. And then again it is going to come out of this uh this use effect and is going to print render comma nodes are length now the load length will be three 
so uh, render three nodes first okay first the body of the function defining the component is executed and the component is rendered for the first time at this point render zero nodes is printed meaning data hasn't been fetched from the server yet so the following function are effect in react parallels so this is a function arrow function is going to look like this console.log of effect actual dot get okay the same thing okay set nodes of response dot data so this is executed immediately after rendering the execution of the function results in effect being printed to the console and the command axios that get initiates the fetching of data from the server as well as registers the following function as an event template for the operation so this will be the response yes so yes. so this is the uh, development runtime environment okay the configuration for the whole application has steadily grown more complex let's review what happens in there okay so this is the uh, makeup of the application okay there is uh, the browser okay browser and this is be the server okay json server and this is i can say um, no like a database i can say okay but more precisely it has been like what i'm having okay a json Okay, and, and the JavaScript files. Okay, the files I'm going to have basically not even a database, but the files which I'm having. What are the files I'm going to have? So the files I'm having is one is a dot JSON file. Where we have a okay array of objects. Okay, and other file will be a this one. Okay, app dot index JSON app dot js. So dot js files. Okay, and uh, you have the development server here okay react development server okay we installed right uh, npx uh, okay react okay create react app so that will be the acting as the uh, development uh, server of react okay and uh, this will be like the javascript code and this is the uh, json Okay. Okay, JSON server, JSON. Okay. Can you get this? Yes. So in this section we will learn the React architecture and Redux. Okay, flex architecture and Redux. So as of now we saw about uh, React hooks. Okay. Now we will see uh, React. Okay so so far we have followed the state management conventions recommended by react so we have placed the state and the methods for handling it to the root component of the application the state and its handler methods have then been passed to other components with props this works up to a certain point but when application grows larger state management becomes challenging so so that you have to uh, see the flux architecture okay so facebook developed the flux architecture to make state management easier so this is the advantage okay why we use this flux is that to make state management easier okay so basically that is uh, you have so many components say for example a uh, home component a uh, login component and then uh, contact component okay home login contact okay these are the three components i'm having okay every time i, I if, if i want to uh, access some of the properties of the prop or some of the pro, uh, properties of uh, of con contact uh, component okay i will be encountering a problem called prop drilling so in that such case okay from home component it has to go to login component and from login component it has to go to the con content component so instead of this case what we will do is we will have a store okay instead of this store we will have all the components of this all the components in the store itself so the store basically acts as a uh, a state manager okay so if i want to get access to the contact uh, component i can directly get it from the store itself 
okay this is the basic thing so that is what is given here so the state is separately comp uh, separated complete from the react components into its own stores state in the store is not changed directly but with the different actions so when an action changes the state of the store the views are re-rendered okay the state of the store okay state of the store and the views okay these two are re-rendered okay these two are re-rendered so this is the diagram which is showing it okay action to dispatcher dispatcher to the store and to the view so in some action of the application okay pushing a button causes the need to change the state the change is made with an action this causes the re-rendering view again so action to dispatcher to the store and view but here again i'm having an action from view to the action action to the store okay so flux offers a standard way for how and where the application state is kept and how it is modified so re, uh, redux okay facebook has implemented flux okay for flux but we will be using redux only redux library only so it works with the same principle but it is a bit simpler than flux okay facebook also uses redux now instead of the or, of, of the original flux okay so this is the output okay and we are going to consider okay plus minus zero okay uh, so create new react app and install the redux with the command npm install redux so as in flex okay the in redux the state is also stored in a store okay okay in redux the state is also stored as stored in a store the whole state of the application is stored into one javascript object in the store because our application only needs the value of the counter we will save it straight to the store if the state was more complicated different things in the state would have, would be saved as a separate fields of the object the state of the store is changed with actions actions are objects which have at least a field determining the type of the action so our application needs for example the following action type increment then if there is a data involved with the action other fields can be declared as needed however our counting app is so simple that the actions are fine with the just this type field the impact of the action to the state of the application is defined using a reducer so in practice a reducer is a function which is given the current state and an action as a parameters okay reducer is a function okay reducer is nothing but a function okay which holds two uh, arguments okay are parameters one is the current state and the action parameter so it returns and what does it returns it returns a new state okay now i will make it simple so i am going to have a reducer this reducer is nothing but what it is nothing but a function so it is going to have two arguments the first argument is the current state comma what is the second this is the first argument so what is the second argument it is nothing but the action it is need to perform okay this is the current state okay okay and this is the action okay and this will be dispatch as per the uh, flush architecture it, uh, this process will go okay so here okay i have defined a reducer for our application counter reducer so as i said what are the two argument is going to stay uh, take state and action so if action dot type equal to increment return state plus one else if action dot type equal to decrement return state minus one else if action dot type equal to zero return zero return state so this is how i am going to use the first parameter the state in the store reducer returns a new state based on the action type so let's change the code okay so it is customary to use switch command instead of uh, if okay in the reducer so i'm going to transfer the if else statement to the uh, switch case okay so i'm using this cons counter reducer state equal to zero i'm assigning the state value to be zero and action switch action dot type case increment return state plus one case decrement state return state minus one case zero return zero default will be if none of the other matches then the code comes here and i'm going to return this state so reducer is never supposed to be called directly from the application code reducer is only given as a parameter to the create store function which creates the store so i'm going to create a function create store 
So I first I have to import that uh, import recreate store from Redux const counter reducer equal to the same above code only here. Okay, that's what I have specified here. Then const store equal to create. I'm calling this function create store function. So const store equal to create store of counter reducer. I'm passing this uh, counter reducer function reducer function into another uh, create store function. So the store now uses the reducer to handle the action which are dis dispatch. That means send to the store with its dispatch method. So store dot dispatch of type that is increment. Okay, you can find out the state of the store using the method get state. So here I have used see const store equal to create store of counter reducer console dot log of store dot get state then store dot dispatch of increment and then I have to get the state of the store I have used a console dot log of store dot get state okay so this is how basically the redux works okay now pure functions okay so the state is now an array okay see here i have inside the not not reducer okay some reducer name i have given there i use a count reducer here not reducer and here i am what is the value i have assigned to state there i have assigned the state account as reducer i have initialized the state to be zero state equal to zero now here i have given an empty array and as i have checked if action dot type equal to new node state dot push of action dot data return state and outside of this if statement also i am going to return the state only now the state is now an array okay new node type actions cause a new node to be added to the state with a push method so the application seems to be working but the reducer we have declared is bad it breaks the basic assumption of redux reducer that return reducers must be pure functions so what is this pure function so they do not cause any side effects and they must always return the same response when called with the same parameters okay what does this pure function will do they do not cause any side effects okay and they must always return the same response when called with the same parameters so we added a new node to the state with the method state dot push of action dot data which changes the state of the state object this is not allowed the problem is easily solved by using the concat method which creates a new array which contains all the elements of the old array and the new element a reducer state must be composed of immutable objects okay it should once declared it should not be changed okay if there is a change in the state the old object is not changed but it is replaced with a new okay it is not changed but it is replaced with a new changed object okay this is exactly what we did with the new reducer okay the old array is replaced with the new reducer so let's expand our reducer but so that it can handle the change of the nodes importance so type toggle importance okay here i am using this since we do not have any code uh, which uses these functionality yet we are expanding the reducer in the uh, test driven way okay so let's let's start by creating a test for handling the action new node okay to make testing easier we will first move the reducers code to its own module to file so this is the file i'm saying okay src reducers node reducer.js we will also add the library dfreeze okay dfreeze is a library which can be used to ensure that the reducer has been correctly defined as an immutable function or not so let's install that so npm install dash dash save dash dev space d uh, deep freeze okay the test which we define okay as the following content like i have to import the node reducer from node reducer deep freeze from deep freeze so there is a library and then i'm saying describe of node reduce okay the narrow function test of returns new state with action new node so here i'm having the state as an array then inside action okay whatever action it has to do i'm giving as a okay so type new type okay key value pair i'm going to give then deep freeze of state const new state equal to node reducer of state comma action okay to have length and to contain equal like that i'm going to check so this is how this is going to push so deep freeze of state command ensures that the reducer does not change the state of the store given to it as a parameter if the reducer uses the push command to manipulate the state the test will not pass however so it says what 
note reduces returns a new state with the action new note okay it returns a new state with the action new note that is it is a type error cannot add property zero object is not extensible at array dot push so then the uh, we cannot use this push command to manipulate at all instead what we will do we will we will create a test for the toggle importance action so so inside this test i am using this uh, returns a new state with the action toggle importance then const state i am separating this as an array of objects see content and important id so the state app state is redux store true state changes are made with the actions false then toggle importance the action i am going to say is toggle importance deep freeze of state const new state like that i am giving so here i am not using the push method itself so this following action toggle importance will be invoked has to change the importance of the nodes with the id 2 the reduced is expanded as follows okay so many reducers we can use so let's continue our work with simplified redux version so in order to ease our development let's change our reducer so that the store gets initialized with a state that contains a couple of nodes see i'm having many nodes right okay initial state itself i'm going to have an array of uh, type only see node reduces state equal to initial state comma action store with the complex state okay implement the filtering for the nodes that are displayed for the user the user interface for the filter will be implemented with the radio buttons okay this is how i will store with the complex state so these are the combined reducers you can see as of this okay and uh, okay now how will you use the connect function to start the redex store so i drew all previously i drawn a, a diagram like home component uh, contact components as such so this is how the redex store works okay this is the like architectural diagram they have given okay. uh, these material will be available in the course description now react router router is nothing but the path okay now i am saying here here you are you are seeing right https okay then uh, full stack open.com so this is the path actually if i'm changing this instead of react router if it is changed to something else then the path is actually getting changed so then this exercise the seventh part okay so this is the final part actually for this particular course as of now so we are going to discuss about the react router okay so it's very common for a web application to have navigation bar which enables switching the view of the application so either we go local host to colon 3000 we go to the home page slash home slash login page slash sign up page uh, slash uh, logout page okay like that we go to we have basically a navigation bar in that we have the routing so that we can switch the view of the application also see here i'm having no home nodes and users so if i'm going to click here i will be going to the home page like that i can have okay so in single page apps we are in reality always on the same page actually so in javascript code run by the browser creates an illusion of different pages okay but the view is going to change but local host slash login page or home page this is not going to change in a single page application okay only the view is going to be changed but not the whole application is going to render to a different page it is actually the single page application only so if http requests are made when switching view they are only for fetching the json formatted data which the new view might require for it to be shown the navigation bar on an application containing multiple views is very easy to implement using react so here the one way we can do it we have i'm having a home component inside that i'm going to say in a h2 tag okay i'm saying the nodes have and then uh, again i'm having uh, nodes okay there i'm giving the heading as nodes then users app inside app i'm going to have a use state of home so page comma set page then two page equal to inside that i'm going to pass this page prop then which is a event dot prevent default okay which is not going to allow for uh, rendering here set page of page 
then content if page is home then i have to return the home component if the page is notes then i have to return the home component okay notes component if the page is equal to users then i have to return the users component like that i'm only doing and here i have given a simple uh, css okay for the styling uh, thing i have given padding as spy then inside return i'm giving okay inside anchor uh, div tag i'm giving anchor tag hf on click two page of home okay the same padding style i'm going to give that is home if i click home i have to go for this two page of home then notes users like that i have given in uh, within three anchor tag okay then finally what i'm doing i'm giving the content also then react dot render of app okay everything all these three you know home component notes component users component everything i'm going to have it inside what app component okay so app component comma document dot get element by id get element by id of root so each view is implemented as its own component we store the view component information in the application state called page this information tells us which component representing a view shown below the menu bar now react uh, router okay which is also a library which provides an excellent solution for managing navigation in react application so let's change the above application to use react router so for that first we have to install this library react router using the command npm install react router dom the routing provided by the react dom is enabled by changing the application as follows so import browser router as router routes comma route comma link from react router dom then inside app component i am having the padding then return inside router routes okay i am having all these things okay for nodes users and all i am having okay then in italic i am having uh, italic tag i am using note app command department of computer science 2022 okay so routing or conditional rendering of component based on the url in the browser is used by replacing components as style run of the router component meaning inside the router tags okay so link to i can use okay inside the router we define links right to modify the address bar with the help of the link component so link to okay link component so to okay slash notes okay if i click this notes i have to go to this particular page okay like that i can have okay for moving to the page okay for components rendered in the url of the browser are defined with the, with the help of the component route so for example i can set the path here route path equal to slash notes that element will be the node component inside this node inside this path what i should have the element is nothing but the node components a nodes component okay so inside routes only i will have all the route component inside the route component i have the attribute like path say it's uh, nodes users okay this will be the root component okay this empty slash will be a root component okay that is home component okay so this is how we have to use this we can use our own custom hooks also okay so the primary purpose of custom hook is to facilitate the reuse of logic used in components. Building your own hooks lets you to extract component logic into reusable functions. So these are all about the React, which you have to know. And this link, okay, will be given in the description. You can go to this page and you can refer to it, which is a very good website to refer to. So thank you as of now.